So we have reached the moment of one of the highlights of our meeting. Um, back in 2013, uh, Max AP accepted a controversial paper for publication in the European Spine Journal by Hannah Albert. Um, actually, both of them are in the audience today, so it promises to be a dynamic debate with them present here. Uh, if I recollect correctly, she had uh, looked at a group of about 160 patients who had had uh, this hernia surgery and had had uh, low back pain for six months after that. And then they were randomized to a group receiving antibiotics and another group who did not receive antibiotics uh, to look if it had an effect on low back pain. So this started uh, a whole controversy and uh, heaps of papers have been generated on that topic since then and we still don't know uh, what to think about all of that. So we decided to have a debate today and we picked two uh, ISSLS lion, uh, Peter Fritzell, who could not be here physically but he's already connected remotely, and our friend Raja. These two lines have been stopped for over 10 days. The, the debate is all gloves off. We want to see blood and we will not cease the debate until one of them has been properly dealt with. <laughs> so if I could ask Peter Fritzell to join us uh, online. Line number one. the first speaker and you will talk about subclinical infection is a fiction. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, how do I share my screen? <laughs> so, can you see my screen now? Yeah, but you have to put it in presenter's, presenter's mode. Down on the bottom. Uh, down on the bottom panel. Deliberately doing this. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Now you can see it's perfect, Peter. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for this invitation. Many, many publications where you use meta-analysis. 
they found that subclinical infection is an interesting hypothesis. In 2013, Hannah Albert and Klaus Manneke uh, presented a study, randomized study, single center, where they treated uh, patients with chronic low back pain in combination with this donation uh, with broad spectrum antibiotics for three months. And they found that uh, the patients treated with antibiotics did better than those treated with placebo. So, 2030 to up to this date, continued publications, all with the same conclusion, it's a hypothesis that this is a subclinical infection. 2019, in respect, uh, there were three Scandinavian studies by Denmark, Norway, and Sweden where we confirm that this is an hypothesis, and I come back to that. 2017 to 2021, Ryan Segal presented uh, many studies uh, using proteomic analysis and also defining uh, a new concept, human defense response proteins. And he claimed that there is now evidence proof for the subclinical treatment. We claim that this is wrong. And should we today, based on current knowledge, advocate antibiotics to patients with chronic low back pain and modic changes, one indicating inflammation, when there are no clinical signs of this kind of spondylitis, and we say no. concentrate on these three by Raya Sekhan and his teams. 1, 2, 3, 17, uh, when he was uh, praised with a clinical, uh, he won the ISSS uh, prize for the best clinical study. Uh, so, in this paper, the main statement is the presence of bacteria in discs and if found two proteomic bacterial magnus and epidermis. Two regulation holes defense response proteins responding to the presence of bacteria. And three, active infection can be confirmed only by identification of translated protein products which signify infection or host defense response proteins in tissues. The main problematic issues with this statement are human data sample preparation in jail digestion is not optimal or reproducible for label-free quantitative mass spectrometry and it's not correct to quantify by PSM. There is only two control risks. Bacterial data is searched in two narrow databases, only the two target bacteria. And we also claim that culturing is more sensitive than DNA analysis when it comes to identifying the presence of bacteria in tissues. Here are the so called bacteria proteins specific for uh, these two bacteria that were found. But it's not so. They are uncharacterized. They are also present in many other tissues. Paper two. The main statements in the Reaseca uh, colleagues article is metagenomics show the presence of bacteria in disease. They found 424 species in disease. Other than, we question that dysbiosis causes inflammation degeneration and our comment is also pain because pain is because we treat these patients and detection of bacterial proteins Proteins found were not specific to certain bacteria. 
is the result of preparation in GF digestion is not optimal, reproducible for downstream mass spectrometry analysis. And bacteria data they search in two narrow databases. And further proof of viable and multiplying bacteria is necessary. Controls are also taken from organ donators. How can you rule out contamination when you take spine out from deceased persons? This dysbiosis is an imbalance in the composition of host associated with microbial communities and it's linked to many human illnesses. However, it remains problematic to define the term dysbiosis by cataloging microbial species names. And this is uh, the control group. They used uh, organ donators and took out species from <coughs> dead persons. So, I mean, we can have contamination here. Maybe three, the main statements here is regulation of how the RP responding, responding to presence of bacteria. But the main problematic is, is again, what I said before, the majority of HDRP or proteins with functions in also other contexts. Cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, and so forth. And here are the proteins that we have made. Uh, so, in summary, Ryan Sega and his colleagues state that HTRP in invertebrate yeast implies bacterial existence for a long time. We claim this is a hypothesis. <coughs> they also say that confirming some clinical infective process. This is also a hypothesis. They use the, the term undoubtedly proved. This is a hypothesis. Concretely proved. Established proof. I mean, they are using very, very Operated on for scoliosis. 
they were 70 years of age. And we examined using culturing and DNA analysis. Bacteria form on the skin in subcutaneous the tissues in the discs in the vertebra. And the findings were similar in the two groups. So, our conclusion is that the, the most probable thing, uh, the, the, what the conclusion is, is that this is contamination. We have a lot of bacteria in hair follicles, and you can't wash that away. As soon as you cut the skin, you will uh, get contamination. So the conclusion, do not, in the absence of dust, discitis and spondylitis, use antibiotics in patients with chronic low back pain. Thank you. Bacteria are germs and bad for health, 
bacteria or some things which are external to our body. And we get contamination of the muscles and other internal organs only when we cut with the skin, I mean with a knife, you know. And bacterial presence means disease. Now these are all commonly invited deep into us due to our medical college and medical training that we believe in them very much. But now we have gone a lot step forward from culture. And when we use metagenomics, suddenly the entire world of bacteria and the relationship between humans and bacteria is completely different. Now we know that the human body has one trillion human cells, but contains from three trillion to eleven trillion bacteria inside. So we are clearly outnumbered by the bacteria on a ratio of 10 is to 1. Actually, if I put it in a different way, we are more microbiome than human. And that actually changes quite a lot. Many bacteria which were earlier thought to be common cells are now implicated to cause diseases. Vice versa, increasingly more and more diseases that were either too thought to be idiopathic are now attributed to medical diseases. Let's take the common thing, rheumatoid arthritis. Now you can say that there is a huge number of bacteria involved, clearly documented. But none of these bacteria are the bacteria which we are talking about. And when Peter says when there is absence of dyskytes, he means that when there is no Staphylococcus aureus, when there is no E. coli, when there is no Pseudomonas. But what about these bacteria which we are not even thinking about? And it's time that we broaden our horizons of thinking about that. Many of the newer philosophies of molecular mimicry, bystander activation of the immune system, microbial superantigens, all these are such interesting concepts on which unknown bacteria can activate inflammation over us. It's aseptic loosening. We found that 75% of revision arthroplasty, which was thought to be cement-related osteolysis, were actually secondary to low-grade infections, which can be found only by 16S RNA-PCR analysis. Everything is completely changed, and we know this Nobel Prize winning study of H. pylori and peptic disease. But even they had to struggle for four years before they could get it published. So this skepticism on bacteria is not unique to Peter, or it's not unique to a few of us, it's being universal over here. And how does this apply to degenerative disc disease? Where we have accepted that it is multifactorial, but we will not accept that some clinical infections can play a role. I am not saying some clinical infection is the only point, but it has also a big role in actually playing. Now, the whole hornetsness was started by Sterling and also Hannah, who is also over here. And when these two papers got published, it actually divided the spine surgery world into two, almost like Protestants and Christians. It was like believers and non-believers. And there was a strong, not only scientific argument, but also emotional attachment to it. You, whenever you see people talking about it, there is always a lot of emotions of belief for this. So I will take my argument through a series of steps. We first have to prove presence of bacteria. And to Peter especially, I have to prove that it is not contamination. Then we need to say that these bacteria have been viable inside the disc and they are a cause of inflammation and infection. And then it's a cause for degeneration of disc. Now let's go one by step. So for the question, are bacteria present inside the disc? And even this healthy disc have bacteria. The one simple answer is, it depends upon how you see. Now let me take this example. Like we can all go for a wildlife sightseeing in South Africa and we want to see some elephants. On one particular day you may not be able to see elephant. That means it is not a conclusion that there is no elephants in South Africa. It only means on that particular day you can see or go to the place where the elephant was not there. And if it is only the elephant you want to see, you will miss for every one single elephant in the South African forest. There are millions of other live organisms which are running around. And if you are looking only for elephants, you will miss all the other millions of organisms around. So it depends on what you are seeing, how you are seeing, and what is the scientific method that you are using to see. 
So if you're using culture, as Peter said, now then you can always continuously discuss about whether it is 3% or 70%. But if you go to the modern methods of recognizing bacteria by omics, and as we have published here, I should thank Peter for discussing this in great amount. But you will find that suddenly there is a whole new method of use. There is a wrong method, what Peter said. He said that we remove these control spines from dead people. That's not true. They were all removed from voluntary organ brain dead donors. So after it is a live condition, after the heart, lungs, liver, and kidney were harvested, we harvested the lumbar spine in the operating theater in sterile condition with an IRB approval and there was no issue of contamination over here. But what was most surprising even for us is that all three groups, the normal control this from broad and voluntary donors, from discrimination and disc degeneration, all of them had a rich microbial presence. But what was the difference was that normal this had a wide spectrum of beneficial bacteria and relatively lower abundance of established pathogens. Whereas degenerated this had reduction in spectrum, but with a relative increase in pathogens. So you can see that what were only present in organ these donors are some of these bacteria which are present only in health and some are abundantly present in organ donor disease. I would again like to draw your attention to say we are not talking about bacteria which we normally talk about. It's not Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, or Pseudomonas, or Klebsiella. You look at these bacteria, these are bacteria which we normally not discuss about, but they are present in abundance, and we really still do not know what is the actual effect of these on the tissue. In the disc degeneration and disc herniation, we again found a lot of bacteria which are known and reported in medical literature to produce infection and problems in other conditions and in other organs. So this exactly is what is a part of why we demonstrated a huge spectrum of bacteria. And we also noticed something more interesting called the dysbiosis. Dysbiosis actually means that there is not the spectrum may be the same. It is not just the absence or presence of bacteria. It is about just even a minor alteration in the population group or the number of bacteria up and down can actually upset the balance. And this type of dysbiosis has been strongly implicated and proved in a huge amount of uh, human diseases. Obesity, diabetes, allergy, atherosclerosis, aging, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis. And why not then that this can have an effect in disc degeneration also. So I think we can finally conclude that we are good at to present that the presence of bacteria is there. And now we have to really ask what is the proof for that it is not contamination. And this is something which is very important. Now I would like to attend, uh, take this uh, by Manu Cooper at all, where they did the study and used confocal scanning laser microscopy and staining with fish and not only these biofilm bacteria, with the biofilm distribution within the disc matrix. If it was contamination, how can there be p agonists with a biofilm formation and within the matrix? Impossible. That means it is that the bacteria has been there for a long time. Here you can see that they have demonstrated perfectly well that the bacteria is within the matrix and with biofilm, which means that the bacteria has been there for a long time. Now, contamination versus colonization can also be definitely differentiated by an inflammatory response in the host to the bacteria. And this is what we uh, reported in the Isil Surprise winning paper and in the, in the European Spine Journal. Upon exposure to a pathogen, the host mounts a defense response, what we call the human defense response proteins. And we found that there were many uniquely present, for, for example, defenses. Peter quoted some of these reserve proteins which can be present in cancer. But he conveniently forgot to quote all these proteins which are present uniquely only in the presence of uh, infection. For example, defensin is a family of antimicrobial and cytotoxic peptides. 
form in the micro visceral granules of eutrophils that helps in phagocyte mediated host defense. Similarly, PAP was also fined with 9.94 variation. And this is acts a first line of defense against invading pathogens. So this adds value, a proof that these bacteria is not just contamination during harvesting, but they have been present in the tissue for some time and the host has been. Thirdly, we now have come up with this concept of demonstrating what is called the quorum sensing. Now, this was very surprising to even to us, but the bacteria within our body talk to each other. They, when they are faced with the inimical atmosphere, when there is an antibiotics or when there is hypoxia, they all talk to each other by producing some molecules and then mount a defense together. And in this uh, paper, which was not accepted in the European Spine Journal and then accepted in uh, NAS, we found that there are 39 of such molecules produced only by bacteria. And we can find here that these are auto inducer 2, peptidoglycans, and corospin. These are well documented quorum sensing molecules, which means that the bacteria have been there for some time. They are facing inimical situations, hypoxic situations, and they are strongly supporting colonization over contamination. So, I think we have crossed the next step of that this is not contamination and there are viable bacteria. And so is this infection and inflammation and that is it. Can bacteria presence initiate regeneration? Now we all know and we have seen many papers in the last two days that there is an inflammation in disc degeneration. Inflammation is a common pathway for disc degeneration. And in the NASA Outstanding Paper Award in 2019, we showed that one of the most important things that differentiate between healthy aging and degenerating discs is by comparing the proteomics between organ donors. Again, this is not from dead cannabis. This is from live brain dead donors after the heart, lungs, kidneys have been harvested. We harvested this in a highly sterile condition. Compare this to non-degenerate aging discs and degenerated discs. And then found in proteomics, there were many conclusions, but I would just like to tell one. That in the young discs, normal discs of organ donors, we found that the majority of the proteins were structural and metabolic proteins. Whereas in those from the degenerated discs, we found that there was an abundance of complement cascade proteins and degradation proteins. Of importance was the abundance of complement C3 protein, which is actually very specific against uh, infection. And this we also found that in the other NASA Award, Outstanding Paper Award, recently in 2021, we again showed that embodied changes are associated with the high activation of intense inflammatory and host defense response proteins. There is a list of these proteins, I am not going through them all specifically. Each of them have a characteristic effect for want of time. But really shows that in the modic change that there is a group. So we know that there is a inflammation possible and lastly we need to discuss is this the cause for disease. And I would like to take modic change and its relevance in subclinical infection as a model. Now if you have to discuss modic, I know this is again a heated topic. The answer will have to be addressed clinically, biologically, imaging, biochemical markers, and surgical outcomes. And we know that clinically there is abundant material to show that body change patients form a separate subset. 43% incidence in patients with low back pain compared to only 6% in general population. And here, by the finger at all paper, they showed that they had more severe with low back pain. Jensen et al. paper in the European Spine Journal, they showed that they are at risk for greater frequency and longer duration of back pain. And Shan et al. in Spine showed that the spontaneous resorption of lumbar disc is less likely when body change. So clearly, they form a separate clinical subset. Imaging, as there was a controversial paper from us this morning asking is body changes primary infect, uh, infective and related is. You know that there is a whole lot of radiological changes that you see in CT 
which are characteristic and which would be undoubtedly accepted by many as post-infected when you see by CT, but we don't uh, recognize it as a possible sequelae of infection when we see it in the spine. Which trauma, which will cause a defect like this in the end claimed or report? So these all look at uh, more important uh, contributory factors for them. Lastly, bacterial evidence, modding change, there is a huge number of papers, huge, huge number of papers in the last few years, which I won't go to, but all of them have shown a very clear association between bacterial infection and this. Clinically, now I would like to again present our paper on the European Spine Journal. We analyzed three, not nine patients. Modding group was 86, and non-modding group was this, the rate of post-operative infection was 4.7 in modding compared to 0.5 in non-modding. A good example is here, you can see a patient with modding operated getting into discoveries and then deprivement and fusion and getting back. Not only that, the post-operative results also are quite different between modding and non-modding and I'm sure that this has been recognized by most surgeons. Again, in the same group, we found that post-operatively at back pain at different intervals, you find that there is a change, a significant difference between uh, back pain post-surgery, significant change in the ODA at different intervals with less favorable function in modic group, and significantly less patient satisfaction in the modic group. Now, there are many other papers also which are repeated. So, for the skeptic, and for Peter especially, so lastly, we need to say, when we are talking about infection, the golden band of justice is always considered to be the Cox postulate. So have we satisfied the four Cox postulates? Are we able to reproduce the disease when the germ is transferred to one? And here we would like to uh, present uh, Stefan's work where they harvested P. antigenes isolated from human disc culture and then injected these colonies into the rat tail disc and they were able to show that between the sham discs and the discs which were operated for PRDs, you could find that modic type changes were happening in the discs and the end plates and in the bodies where the PRDs was. So we find here that Cox postulate the circle is quite well reconstructed. So the organisms have been identified without doubt. Not by culture. If you use the wrong method, then you will not be successful. That we know for everywhere. If you are looking at somewhere else, when the bacteria is somewhere else or using the wrong culture, first of all, we don't even know what is the organism inside. We are assuming it is P. actinis only. But our omic studies shows that there are a huge number of other bacteria. If you ask us the question, are you sure which one is the culprit? I would frankly say no. We are still not got to the stage. We have to identify that this is the culture. But I think in different patient populations, in different countries, in different people, it could be different bacteria. Now let's take the example and analogy of sore throat or gastroenteritis. It doesn't mean that every single patient with gastroenteritis around the world get the same organism. There are many organisms which can produce gastroenteritis. So why not modic change? And in the same person, it can cause at different periods too. So why not the same modic change? So we have identified a lot of organisms based on PCR and gene-based analysis. Histology has proved the presence of bacteria inside. By bifocal, biofilm demonstration and also by human defense response proteins, we have shown that the bacteria is there. Quorum sensing has proved that the bacteria has been there for a long time. And Stefan's work has shown that there is a production of the same kind of reaction when you inject these products. So I think and we are safe to say that this is there. So are we exclusive to conclude? I know there are a lot of people who are talking about mechanical hypothesis, but you know, this can cause a plate breaks or annular tear. The neovascularization can bring bacterial population and then that can lead to discrimination. So, concluding, a large fraction of microorganisms not only reside within us, 
but sadly also is in one us. The bacteria within us has a genetic diversity of 10,000 times more than us. In the gut, there are millions of bacteria, only 40% of them fully identified. Being outnumbered 10 is to 1, we are more microbiome than as one of the famous old Indian scholars said, to underestimate the enemy and to mistake an enemy as a friend are the two mistakes that any king must avoid, which Peter also must avoid. Okay. We still have a long way to go before we get close to understanding what most of these bacteria do exactly, or in fact, what even most of them are, because 60% of them are still uncharacterized. It has been estimated that the field of microbiology so far has only explored very partially. It has been a great, exciting trip for us, a learning process, journey, and I thank our entire team, which has done most of this work with us. Thank you very much for your time. So, this is not over yet. So, we will have a for three minutes from Peter. So, can you please put Peter up again and then? has another chance, three minutes. I will be very strict with the time now, the three minutes. And after that, it is possible to have to ask some questions if they keep the time. So, Peter, what do you have to say? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Raya, for this presentation. Uh, no, they were not diseased, they were organ. Uh, um, but, but, when you take out uh, uh, an organ, this or whatever, of course there is a risk of contamination. Doesn't matter if, it, if the person is dead or not. Of course uh, there could be contamination. And, and uh, it, in, in fact, uh, we have proved that there is a contamination. Uh, you say biofilm. Well, biofilms are everywhere. It's, it's not proof of anything. I mean, uh, and uh, uh, if you have human defense response proteins, uh, of course you can have it in a hair follicle. And you can, when you cut uh, through the skin, you can bring it down to the disc, and you can, you can, you can find it there, and you say it has been there for a long time. But you can, it can be from the hair follicle. So that's not proof. That's not proof. Uh, this is what our microbiologist says. The summer identified issues by the papers. The raw data are not accessible. We can't control it. The proteomics is based on ingest digestion. It's, it's not optimal. Bacterial proteomics has shortcomings. Two narrow databases have been used. And so forth. And necessary actions, what we ask is the studies should be reproduced elsewhere. And all raw data should be made available so that the scientific community they can search the data through the right databases. And two, the methodology for proteomics can be improved by using in solution or filter aided sample preparations protocols together, together with label protocols such as TAN as TAG evaluation. And data should be searched to pipelines with larger and corrected databases for accurate uh, material identification. So there are, there, are, there, are, there are many objections against your methodology. And I will finish uh, with this, as this is not clear. We have to come back to ethics. What is the most problematic thing today against human health? According to World Health Organization, it is antibiotic resistance. So if you, if you really claim, based on your studies, which we question, that 
you could use antibiotics against it. back pain. It's uh, very problematic and ethically, I must say, not correct. Thank you. Thank you. 